okay, I'm really overwhelmed by all these speeches and I wonder what I can add. So uh, let's uh, see what uh, happens. Um, and the also, I think the, the, the title is rather pretentious for a 10 uh, minute presentation. So uh, uh, I think I got the slot to talk to you because uh, AVF wants uh, Wageningen University be to become member and I'm working on that. So, uh <laughs> <laughs> but it's not yet decided. Uh, I'm a researcher at one part of Wageningen University, uh, the economics uh, uh, department, and I'm specializing in short food supply chains. Then I'm also uh, a board member of several urban agriculture initiatives. Uh, the latest one where I'm in an advisory role is Grow X. That's a, a vertical farm to be built in Amsterdam uh, uh, by the end of this year. So, uh, and I'm also a researcher in uh, European projects. Uh, this one is particularly interesting. This was for the Dutch uh, Ministry of Agriculture, where we uh, um, were in a green deal where we uh, were um, uh, looking at business plans of urban agriculture in general, and then also to look if it was possible to attract uh, uh, finance, uh, external finance. So we were really looking through a complete diversity of different fa uh, urban farms, whether uh, we could attract um, uh, uh, finance already. That was a couple of years ago. This is the report, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry it's only in Dutch, but it's uh, quite an interesting uh, study. And uh, we also expanded this to the European level uh, in a cost action. This is a cooperation of researchers uh, throughout Europe. And we were all interested in urban agriculture in general. And vertical farming was part of it as well. So that's uh, actually a quite nice book. It gives an overview of what's happening in Europe. <laughs> And then I'm also a member of this Rural Networks Assembly. It's like a Polish parliament in a way. When I was uh, uh, introduced to this uh, uh, phenomena, it's an advisory board to uh, DG Agri. So it's uh, not the parliament that is doing the, the regulations, but we're uh, uh, advising and supervising the implementation. And uh, that's me and that's Hogan. So I'm only uh, five meters away from the center of <laughs> the, the European uh, uh, common agricultural policy. Uh, and and uh, interestingly, uh, the reason why they asked me was because of the urban farming background that I had. I, I was, I, the first time when I went to Brussels, I said that I was a researcher in sustainable food systems. And then they said, uh, that's the wrong person. We invited you because uh, you're an urban agriculture expert. So that's now on the agenda in Brussels, much to my surprise. <laughs> and this was a project that I was involved in back in uh, 2000. I was the agricultural advisor to uh, uh, an architectural firm in the Netherlands, MVRDV, and they came up with this uh, solution to the pig farming problem in the Netherlands, <laughs> stacking pigs, animal welfare was provided, open air, uh, roaming around, natural behavior, uh, but it was uh, uh, on a scale that we hadn't seen before in the Netherlands, and of course it was never realized, but it went all over the world, and uh, it was my first uh, uh, encounter with vertical farming. So uh, we've talked about horticulture all day, but actually uh, for me it started with uh, growing pigs uh, high in the sky. And then I should say critical remarks, I don't know, but uh, in general, in the Netherlands, when people start to be excited about urban, an urban farming project, uh, being, I'm also excited because I really like it. But as a researcher, I should always point out that it's very difficult to earn um, money with growing food in Europe. Um, uh, and in the Netherlands, we have a food system that is, according to Oxfam International, one of the best in the world maybe even the best one. We're beating the Italians, much to my surprise, the French <laughs> and the Swiss. So we have a lot of cheap, uh, cheap food, very healthy and uh, nutritious. So really, if you want to beat that system, you have to be very good. And uh, then we did a study about vertical farming. I'm focusing on vertical farming. As, uh, actually, I was not involved in it, but uh, colleagues of mine did this study about uh, the, the, the price of a, a head of lettuce in a building, and it's really uh, almost three times as ex 
the, the, the cost is three times as ex uh, expensive as uh, out in the field. So really, uh, as, as a research institute, we are, uh, we are always uh, telling people, okay, you're going to get a hard time if you just do vertical farming in the Netherlands to grow food. There should really be other reasons why you're doing it. For example, you're a technology platform, you want to show how it works and then maybe uh, uh, show the technology to, uh, to uh, uh, delegations from all over the world and then try, then try to s sell the technology. So that's possible, but as a food growing operation, it's really quite difficult. <laughs> Uh, maybe not in other uh, countries. Uh, uh, we hear these stories, and I think uh, a lot of the other speakers were referring to that as well, that in other countries, for specific reasons, it could already uh, be a, a business case, uh, uh, because, for example, the arable fields are uh, uh, contaminated by nuclear uh, waste, so then, of course, this is a real good alternative. And in the US, maybe the, the fresh logistics is not as good as we have it in the Netherlands, so there it may also be a real good alternative. Now I come with my critical remarks. This is the study that we did for the Green Deal that I was talking about. These are all the different urban agriculture initiatives. Uh, some of them, oh, some of them are, uh, some of them are uh, vertical, but not all of them. Um, and we looked at their circularity, and we actually found out that none of them are completely circular. None of them are completely circular, especially uh, the one uh, that is uh, uh, the vertical farm with the LED lights, nutrients and water are still going in it. So um, you have to be really, um, uh, we really uh, look always to what is the sustainability of the, pr of the proposition. And I think a lot of work there needs to be done, as some of the other speakers have said also already. Um, and also, I actually think that, uh, that we have to look, that we have to validate uh, this impact, impact uh, as in the, in the uh, environmental uh, sphere, but also in the social sphere. So I'm really interested in doing research about the n not only the number of jobs, but also the quality of the jobs. And we've heard a lot of uh, talk in the Netherlands and actually uh, a lot of urban farms uh, do uh, rehabilitation, so people from uh, distance to the labor market, they, uh, they start to grow food and then they become, uh, 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 they become employees somewhere. And we, we really need to, 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 to monitor that uh, in order to, uh, to show the benefits and maybe also get the rewards for it. But this is another thing, urban farms, vertical farms are often uh, said, okay, it's a very efficient use of space, so that leaves a lot for biodiversity. And that argument is, a, is a theoretically correct, but I'm promoting this idea that a vertical farm should also create a biodiversity reserve uh, on, the, on the land that it saves, and really do this directly, because we also have the, the, the positive external effects of multifunctional agriculture are that they also create biodiversity when they uh, produce food. So here, so here we also have to organize that positive externality of vertical farming. If we don't do it, we will end up with horizontal farming and vertical farming occupying all the space and competing with each other, and then food is uh, very cheap. So I'm also uh, advocating, and actually uh, I told GrowX, I don't know if they are here, GrowX in Amsterdam, the vertical farm, to team up with a, with a permaculture garden in Amsterdam, and um, uh, if I get a fee as an advisor, I said, okay, the fee will go to the permaculture garden, because we have to prove that efficient use of space is creating biodiversity reserves. So that's my point. Then the second point is, we've been talking about vertical farming all day, but there are a lot of other farming systems also uh, in place to feed cities in the future. We have, uh, a f a we have at the building level, we have completely controlled, we've been talking about it, but we also have the old system of the snake walls, that is how horticulture started in the Westland area, where uh, the sun energy is, is uh, contained in the wall and you have actually a microclimate where you can grow vines, even in uh, the Netherlands. So uh, that, that's a complete open system. And then we have, of course, uh, not building, but peri-urban, we have uh, precision farming on that side, and we have agro um, 
uh, ecological restoration on that side. So we can say, okay, there's less soil in the world and there's less water, so we should be very efficient. But we can also say we have to rebuild soil and we have to recuperate uh, re uh, uh, drinkable water. So that's over there. And I'm a big promoter of this whole, this whole, plit uh, this whole uh, range of uh, farming systems that is going to feed the cities. Then another point that I'm uh, making in the Netherlands it is really true that we've seen consortia for maybe five or ten years uh, struggling to get a vertical farm in the Netherlands. These are all initiatives that uh, we've seen in the Netherlands, all consortia trying to build a vertical farm, and this is the one that succeeded just... Uh, and here's another one that's going to uh, be in Amsterdam. That's a hotel where uh, one or two floors have a, have a greenhouse in them as well. So the point that I'm going to make is that uh, we will advance much faster if we actually share our knowledge about these consortia and where are the opportunities rather than that everybody works on its own, which was in the earlier days in the Netherlands. For example, the Schilde in The Hague is built on a consortium, on a coalition that first started in Amsterdam and then got stuck and then the whole consortium was transplanted to The Hague. So we really need uh, 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 to give each other the credit, like Amsterdam didn't like it, but uh, you know, like The Hague was more fertile, so let's go to The Hague. And th that's how you progress, if you have open innovation. So I'm a big fan of that as well. And um, why am I am a fan of that? This is because uh, vertical farming as it is today is uh, quite expensive, so we're all aiming for the top of the pyramid, but we should aim, of course, to the bottom of the pyramid, to a lot of people with uh, a less income, maybe even less than fi uh, $1,500. Um, dollars. So uh, we need systems that are really accessible to people with low income. And this is with open innovation, as I said before, but it's also with really uh, making the um, uh, technology simpler. And therefore, I really like this idea from uh, Professor De Beste, where he, uh, with an artist, showed that if you buy the lamps and, uh, and, 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 and the technology, you can even do it in your desktop study. And with students, he also uh, built uh, this in... Uh, in the um, innovation center in Venlo, and I really think that's also a way forward, that we make the technology very accessible so that people can build their own. That's really how you feed the world, and especially uh, the bottom of the pyramid. So my last point is that um, I d uh, we did a study at uh, our institute into the future of the greenhouse industry in the Westland area. And one of the scenarios was, okay, uh, the big uh, uh, data companies will come in. Uh, they will have these completely uh, controlled environments. So there's no grower anymore. Some, somewhere on the planet, there's a kind of a control room where people uh, process all this big data and we don't need growers anymore. Uh, that was one of our uh, scenarios. But um, uh, then I went to a presentation by Philips and then they said, actually, we need growers because uh, uh, in the first stage of uh, city farming, vertical farming, uh, we were uh, dealing with architects and we were dealing with uh, uh, all kinds of people and uh, the ideas became bigger and bigger and more brilliant as if, you know, you need to grow uh, tomatoes in a kind of a, a room where, where you actually, where they, at Philips, they actually make uh, chips, the, 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 how do you say, the semiconductors. The, the, so actually, uh, I, um, I think that urban farming, even though it's very uh, high, it can be very high tech and can be very data driven, it needs the uh, eye or the fingers of a, of a real grower. And as a son of a farmer, uh, I think uh, uh, that's also uh, important to take into account. So really, thank you for your attention and uh, I uh, congratulate you with this uh, conference. Thank you very much for that. <laughs>